Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and what could be one of the most important investing videos you watch for 2022. Nation, stocks are up nearly 40% in the last year. That's the fourth best year for returns going all the way back to 1986. Only in three other years have the tech stocks in the NASDAQ 100 produced higher returns in 1999, 91, and 2003. But that also makes 2022 a dangerous year for investors. In each of those three years of huge market returns, stocks went on to average just 9% in the next year, and the full year after that 99 peak, stocks crashed by 50%. Now, stocks do not fall just because they get expensive, but there are five catalysts, five drivers that could have investors crying into their Cheerios next year. Making money on your stocks is gonna mean being ready for these with the investments that will benefit. In this video, I'll walk you through the five biggest risks and opportunities for investing in 2022. For each, I'll show you exactly what it means for stocks and then share the best investments to make right now. Stick around because then I'll reveal the five worst investments for the next year, the five investments that will lose your money. All you Bowtie citizens know we can't get started though without that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, it has been a spectacularly good few years for investing with stocks in the tech index up almost three times your money in the last five years. Now that is unprecedented and you're gonna start hearing a lot of predictions for 2022 in the next few months. But what I want you to remember here is that stocks do not crash just because they get expensive or because returns have been so great but it does make it more likely. If we go back to that annual returns on the NASDAQ 100, all the way back 35 years, here I found the stock returns for the following year. And if you look at what happened to stocks after the best 18 years in that data, they posted an average of just 4.5% return in the next year. Just as interesting though, if you look at the 18 worst years for stocks, you see the group went on to return an average of over 20% in the following year. And in fact, we see that warning in the expectations for returns from some of the Wall Street's biggest firms. Morningstar surveyed the 10-year expected returns from five firms here and look at the column for U.S. equities, stocks. This is what these analysts expect investors to earn each year over the next 10, and it's not pretty. Analysts at BlackRock, the world's largest fund manager, expect U.S. stocks to produce just 5% return a year over the next decade. Now, even Vanguard, the most optimistic of the bunch, expects investors to make less than 6% a year. And now what this tells me is that when stocks do get this expensive after returns have been so strong, it makes it all the more likely that something comes along to bring prices back down to earth. Whether it's a financial crash like in 2008, a bubble burst like in 2000, or a broken derivatives market like in 1989. But that does not mean that you can't make money. What it does mean is you need to be ready for that something to come along. You need to be watching for the biggest forces on the market and understand which stocks will benefit. And before we get started on those market forces and the five best investments, I wanna get your input on this. Watch through the video, watch those five market forces, and let me know in the comments below, which do you think is gonna be the biggest driver in 2022? What do you think is gonna be that major theme next year to drive stock prices? These first three are possibly the biggest drivers to stocks next year, and we're starting with the big one, inflation. Prices have already jumped 5% in the last year, and the Fed has gone from saying higher prices would only last a few months to temporary, to finally admitting that inflation is higher than expected. Just last week, Jack Dorsey, billionaire founder of Twitter and Square, said the H word, hyperinflation, and a warning that we could be heading for those days of carrying cash in wheelbarrows, similar to 1930s Germany where cash was worth more as wallpaper because of that triple digit inflation. Now, I don't think we get anywhere near hyperinflation next year, but Chair Powell and everyone else in the government wants you to believe that we're just gonna get a little inflation. Well, like they say though, inflation is like getting pregnant. You don't get just a little bit. We will have higher prices in 2022. Rents are already skyrocketing and catching up with those home prices. Giant producers like Nestle and ConAgra are already warning about those higher food prices. And for this, there may be no better investment than Bitcoin, with JP Morgan recently calling out the cryptocurrency for its inflation-fighting power. Now, all you out there in the nation know, I haven't always been cuckoo for crypto puffs. I was skeptical and just started buying for a long-term position this year, but 
the more I learn about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, the more I believe this is a legitimate asset class with a strong upside. I'm up more than 50% on my investments in Bitcoin and these other cryptocurrencies, and I've partnered with BlockFi for a series of videos, including why I think Bitcoin could go to over 190,000 in the next few years, and even higher if inflation takes hold. I'll link to a few videos in the description below to help you understand how Bitcoin and the investment works. It takes less than five minutes to open an account on BlockFi and you can deposit directly from your bank. You'll earn interest up to 9% on your cryptocurrencies and can even apply for the first Bitcoin Rewards credit card that pays cash back in Bitcoin. Click on the link I'll leave in the description and you'll get up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you open an account. Next on our list of best investments and market risks is the rise in interest rates. And we're gonna see a lot of these risks and investments are related here you'll get higher interest rates because of that higher inflation, as well as things like a tight labor market that we'll talk about next. So then the idea here is to find the best investments that work across all five of these risks, or as many as possible, to give you the best chance of making money. The interest rate on the 10-year treasury bond, the benchmark for all other rates, has doubled in the past year. And, and folks, I know this isn't as sexy as talking about the next hot stock, but that is a huge move in borrowing rates and will affect the stock market. For example, when the rate on the 10-year treasury increased less than a percent in the first three months of the year, tech and growth stocks got absolutely crushed. Stocks in the NASDAQ index, the green line here, lost 8% and growth stocks in the ARK Innovation Fund plunged 33% in just a few months. And those interest rates are expected to keep moving higher, up to 2% by the end of the year, and this is directly tied to that inflation, so it could go much higher. In that scenario, the only stocks safe in the market could be those in the financial sectors, and specifically the bank stocks. And why this happens, you just need to remember how banks make money. Banks will continue to pay out those rock bottom rates on your savings, but as interest rates rise, are gonna make more money on the loans they provide. That rise in interest rates over the last year is a big factor on how our 2021 Bowtie Nation portfolio has been able to beat the market by more than 14%. And we positioned early in stocks like Wells Fargo for a 50% return and Citigroup for 33%. And here, not only do bank stocks give you the opportunity for that higher return, they're also gonna protect the rest of your portfolio if those higher interest rates start hitting tech stocks again. And here in this group, I still like shares of Wells Fargo, ticker WFC, as well as Huntington Bank shares, ticker HBAN. And we're already hearing about this next one, and it could be one of the biggest market forces in 2022, the labor market and that worker shortage. Nation, I worked as a labor market economist for the state of Iowa for five years. I studied this stuff, I lived it, and right now I can say this is the craziest labor market we have ever seen. There are now more than 11 million job openings, but only 8 million people looking for jobs. The last two monthly jobs reports have come in surprisingly bad, with just 194,000 jobs created in September versus 500,000 expected because employers just can't get people to come back to work. The labor force participation rate, that's the percentage of eligible workers employed or looking for a job, is now just 61.6%. That's the lowest it's been since 1976. So here between millions retiring over the last few years, people dropping out of the workforce on their investing profits, and, and people that are just still too afraid to go back to work, there is a historic worker shortage, and it's gonna lead to higher wage pressures over the next year. Now that's great for workers, but companies are gonna get slammed on those higher costs. And for a lot of industries, employee wages are a third or more of their total costs. Now increasing that is gonna destroy profits and hit their stock prices. So preparing for this means finding those stocks of companies with relatively less workers in that sales process. And the best way to find this is by focusing on companies with more of their sales online. And companies focused on booking sales through their website rather than in a store aren't gonna to have to compete for workers and that's gonna protect their profits. For example, Tapestry, ticker TPR, owner of the iconic Kate Spade and Coach brands with 90% of its sales direct to consumer. And the pace of e-commerce growth here has been phenomenal. After a three-fold increase in online sales last year, the company was able to build on that with 55% growth in the most recent quarter, adding another 600,000 new customers in North America alone. Now that digital first sales focus is gonna protect profits at Tapestry versus competitors like, like Target or TJ Maxx that get a much smaller percentage of their sales from online. Another great example here is WW Granger, ticker GWW, a maker of industrial supplies and tools out of Chicago. Now, Granger booked 32% of its orders online, 18% on integrated software with its customers, and 15% through vending machines. 
That's 75% of its sales with very little sales support or staffing needed. Now our next market risk and best investment for 2022 is gonna be in a different direction from those others with the risk of slower economic growth. And whereas those first three risks would be in most likely in a growing economy, there's also the very real possibility that economic growth slows down next year. The Federal Reserve has been pumping over $120 billion into the system each and every month through its bond buying program and that's on top of the trillions of stimulus and other programs. And combined with the federal government spending, more than $10 trillion has been pushed into the economy over the last 18 months, helping to push economic growth up 6.5% higher in the second quarter. But that's about to come to an end starting this month. The Fed is expected to start reducing its monthly bond purchases, pushing less money into the system each month until it stops altogether sometime mid-2022. And even on those plans for government spending, it's still going to be a drop in total spending from the stimulus of last year. In fact, Goldman Sachs recently cut its forecast for U.S. economic growth to just 4% in 2022 because of lower stimulus spending. Now, the big problem here is that while in the past that lower economic growth would have meant lower interest rates and even lower inflation, there is a very real threat next year that those two problems remain, low growth but still high inflation, a problem called stagflation that could destroy savers and, and anyone living on a fixed income. Now, this is something I highlighted in a recent video and could be one of the biggest surprises of the next year, so I'll link to that in the video description below. And here, your best investment is gonna be in something like a diversified dividend fund, like the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, ticker SCHD, which pays a 2.9% dividend yield and gives you broad exposure to dividend stocks. Dividend stocks have accounted for nearly half the stock market's annual return on average, and even higher in years when stocks tumble. And my thinking here is that companies are still gonna have extremely strong cash flows next year and lots of balance sheet cash saved up, but maybe not ready to reinvest that cash ahead of slower economic growth. Instead, they might decide to return more of that money through dividends and share buybacks, boosting the stock price and funds like this one. Our last market risk, that unforeseen black swan event, the unexpected story that slams stocks for a bear market. And it's right about here that the pundit on TV drops the dumbest piece of investing advice saying, expect the unexpected, which makes absolutely no sense if you think about it, but there is something to be said for looking for that one investment that should hold up no matter what. So here you're looking for an investment that doesn't follow the stock market, something in a different asset class that will produce returns even if stocks crash. And one of the best opportunities I've found in a long time is what's called the cash and carry trade on Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures. Now this gets a little complicated. I'm actually preparing a full video to walk you through this. So don't forget to join the community and click that bell icon to get notified. But I've been making an annualized 20% return on this and it's nearly risk-free. The cash and carry trade means you buy an asset, usually a commodity or a currency, and then sell the futures contracts against that at the same time. And how you make money here is by finding those assets where the current price is less than that futures price. So you lock in that difference. Now let me walk you through an example because it really is actually very simple. We can go to BlockFi and see the current price for Bitcoin is at $63,011 each. Now we can go here to the CME, that's the major exchange where futures are traded, and we can see each month's contract prices for Bitcoin. Now this October contract expires just four days, so we'll use the November futures for a reference. And you see here, one month futures for Bitcoin are now trading at $63,928 each. That's more than 1.4% above the current price in the market. Another way to look at this, there is a $900 difference per Bitcoin between the current price and these contracts to buy or sell. So then what you can do, and this is how a lot of big institutional investors are making a lot of money right now, but is you buy Bitcoin and you hold it in your account. And at the same time, you sell those futures contracts against it. And this means you have the Bitcoin and at the same time, a contract to sell those Bitcoins to someone else when that contract expires each month. And the way this works is that as each month's futures contract gets closer to that expiration date, the price moves closer to the current market price. You see here, the October contract is just $199 higher than the current Bitcoin price. On the last day of those contracts, that price is gonna match the market price on that day. So then you see how this is a risk-free return that doesn't matter what the market does. If the price of Bitcoin goes down, then I lose on that Bitcoin that I bought for $63,011, but I gain the same amount on that futures contract that I've sold. If on the other hand, the price of Bitcoin goes up, I've gained that money on the coins that I own, but lose the same amount on the futures contracts. 
Now the futures contracts are gonna be worth the same price as that Bitcoin in a month when that contract expires and I've pocketed the $900 difference. And then you can roll this over every month. On the last few days of those futures contracts, you buy those back, close out the position, and then sell the same amount for the next month. You're gonna collect another one to one and a half percent premium on those new futures contracts. So you're making 13 to 20% annualized whether stocks go up or down or whether Bitcoin goes up or down. It just doesn't matter because you're locking in that profit on the trade. In fact, the only downside here is that you do give up the potential profit on Bitcoin over each month. You've completely covered your Bitcoin with those sold futures contracts. You've locked in the profit each month and made it a risk-free trade, but you don't get that upside on the Bitcoin as well. Now, I know this seems like a complicated strategy, but watch for that detailed video because it really is a great investment that's gonna produce a percent or two a month with no market risk. Now, all you out there in the Bowtie Nation know, not all is gonna be rainbows and unicorns next year. Like we saw in those NASDAQ annual returns, this market is ripe for a sell-off and those five market forces will weigh on other investments. These five investments aren't guaranteed to lose money, but they are already starting with a strike against them. On that inflation theme, stocks of consumer staples companies have already been seriously hit this year with the lowest return of the 11 sectors in the economy, just 5.6% versus the 21% return on the market. Now, these are companies selling things that we need to buy, like food and personal products, but the industries are just so competitive that they can't raise prices to cover those higher costs to production. We're already seeing that profitability come down, with stocks in the sector only making 6.8% profit on their sales last quarter, compared to a profit margin of 7.1% during the same quarter last year. And this could continue to get worse, so I think you avoid stocks like Clorox, Procter & Gamble, and Kellogg. All the companies in that sector are going to face a tough year, but especially those food and personal care products. Now, on that higher interest rate theme, it's hard to find a worse investment than bonds. You see, because bonds pay those fixed interest payments, as interest rates rise, that payment starts to look less attractive. Why buy a bond paying a 3% yield when others in the market are now paying 5%? So bond prices tend to go down when rates go up. And you see here a chart of the three Vanguard bond funds with the short-term bonds in red, intermediate in green, and purple for those long-term bonds. And this goes by the average time to maturity for those bonds. So the short-term bond fund invests in bonds with less than five years left, while, while the long-term bond is gonna hold those for a decade or more. And you see all three have lost money this year from a 1.7% loss on the BSV to a 7.4% loss on the BLV. Bonds are supposed to be that safety investment, the kind of investment that you buy when you need the security and the fixed income, and they're getting slammed on both inflation and higher interest rates. Now, I think you can still hold something in that short-term bond fund, the BSV for security, but real safety next year is gonna come in diversification outside of stocks and bonds in real estate and cryptocurrencies and even assets like artwork. Worst investment number three for 2022. And I think the discount retailers and restaurants are gonna get hit hard on that worker shortage. More than 4 million Americans quit their job in August alone. That was a record and they did it because they can always get another job at higher pay in a heartbeat. Those workers are being sucked out of the lowest paying jobs at discount retailers and those fast food joints. And so I think a lot of those companies, the dollar stores and the McDonald's are gonna get hit here from multiple angles. Inflation is gonna increase their costs that can't be fully passed on to the consumer so, so they get hit a hit to profits. But they're also gonna to have to raise their wages more which is also gonna hit profits even more. Now any company with workers still making less than 15 bucks an hour is gonna see that wage pressure come down on it like a tsunami. This next one is gonna be controversial but in that low growth scenario, tech and growth stocks could feel the pain. Now long term, I think you can still hold those internet and the tech stocks but if you get a little squeamish when prices fall or, or you've got less than a few years to needing that money, I say you take your profits and run because it could be a very bad year for tech. Profits for stocks in the technology sector are forecast to fall from 27% annual growth this year to just 9% in 2022, and sales growth is set to slow to a crawl. All you have to do is look at a chart for any tech stock index, like the NASDAQ here or the growth ETF to see that Something broke in February of last year to take all these stocks straight to the moon. And of course, we know it was the Fed and that wave of money that broke the market with those rock bottom rates and the money pouring into stocks. But folks, the bill always comes due. And when interest rates rise and the economic growth that was supporting these stocks slows down, you're gonna see the same thing that happened in February of this year and a lot of 
desperate investors. Next on our list of worst investments, stocks of utilities and consumer staples could be the ultimate disappointment here because they're supposed to protect you against those unforeseen events and the market crashes, but, but both are facing those insurmountable obstacles in the higher interest rates and inflation. Higher energy costs and slow approval for those rate increases are gonna hold back utility stocks, now the second worst sector after consumer staples this year. And the inflation pressure we already talked about is gonna to continue to hit those consumer staple stocks. Click on the video to the right and see how to create a dividend stocks ladder and live off your dividends, along with the five dividend stocks to get you started. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.